Hi, I'm John DeArmond. And I'm Edward. We're with the Kokia Valley Sword Group. And today we're going over the application of the Jodon Kata of the Nito Seho. So let's start off by giving a quick demonstration. As always for the Nito Seho, I will be Shirachi and Edward will be Uchidachi, the bad guy. Good. Pretty simple. Pretty easy. That's okay. Let's break it down bit by bit in terms of application. Actually, first, let's go and uh, see what the book says. Right? Right? Um, if you want to know more about this book, watch the first video. So, the second technical form. In the second technical form, you hold the two swords high and strike with a single blow at the moment that your adversary launches his attack. If your blow is deflected, leave your sword in the position it has reached and strike from below, upward at the moment of your opponent's launching another attack. Do the same if the situation repeats. This form includes different ways of directing your mind and various cadences. If you exercise in the technique of my school, striking according to this form, you will be able to attain precise mastery of the five principles, Michi of the sword. And you will obtain the ability to win no matter what your way of doing it is. It is necessary to train this well. So, let's look at it, right? From Musashi's eyes says, ah, hold your swords high. Now, there is a uh, passed on story within the tradition um, in which Jodan, in its early years, was done with both swords in the Hasso position. Uh, that changed, um, but that's the, we're, we're still in kind of a high position. So, he swings, and what do I do? I swing with both swords. This is our infamous red leaves cut. Um, one example of it. There is another example in the uh, next kata, in Gaidon, right? This is the idea of the red leaves cut is to strike their sword firmly and in an instant. Right? Ba, ba, and drive through. Uh, yeah, you break a lot of Boken uh, when you're first practicing this. Polypro's your friend. Yeah, the, the polypropylene is nice for that because it, it, gets a little bendy. it will not break. It does get bendy. <laughs> you, you can bend them pretty much, but uh, they'll bend back. They'll bend back, Hot right? Ones. It looks good. All right? This idea that ba, this sword and that sword. To their sword if they're far away, which is the kind of feeling of this kata. Or, of course, ba, and you can take it right into him without, uh, without delay, depending on his range. So after that, ba, 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 right? The opponent retreats. If he renews his attack, strike him from beneath. Right? So, in this, we do Jujidomi, right? And throw. But what Musashi is saying is that if he swings, pop! Oh my goodness, it's the first kata. It's the first kata all over again. It's that hit him continuously. The nice thing about this position, right, is I can hit him, pop! With either, either or, depending on the environment. Um, and the distance, of course. My preference is always going to be to hit him with the long sword because the long sword is heavier, and heavy means more hurdy hurdy, right? And we want more hurdy hurdy in his bits. 
So, this begs the question. If Musashi says that the swing comes, that this is an attack, and then that the next one is also an attack, what's with this position? What's with this Jujidome? I mean, it even has a name. So there's this feeling like, oh, this is a defense. This is a block. The figure 10 block. Like somebody's gonna swing at me. I have blocked you, sir. Right? It's not, it's not a thing. It's, it's a training position. <laughs> it, is a, it is a training position that is not used. You're not going to, to juji dome somebody's sword. It's, please don't. It's, it's not what it's for. And it's one of those funny things where because we've set our kata in a position, because it serves a purpose in the kata, right? It gets a person used to interacting with the sword at this close distance, right? Where we're no longer out here, right? But to where they're swinging and we're coming into that space and they're coming into this space. It's a, woo it's, it's, it's very close, it's very personal, and it feels very uh, unsettling, very dangerous at first. And it is. You're in my bubble. It is, you are, you are in their bubble, right? Again, you're teaching your body how to shape itself. A little higher? So again? Swing it. Right? This is a variation. Um, I don't use that variation for that reason, but... Yeah, I guess it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it probably really hurt. I think it's called Juji Shiginomi? Shigiyomi? Scissors. Figure 10 scissors. Um, it's in one of the, either the Aikuchiropo or the uh, Setsusan Kata set. Anyway, it's an offshoot Kata set that was developed after Musashi's time. Um, so while it's a very cool idea, I would take it with a grain of salt, um, but it's pretty cool. All right, scissors! Chika, 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 chika. So what are we really doing? Of course, even if we're not hitting their sword to disarm them or break their sword, right? We are still working them. We're still cutting them. It's aggression, aggression the whole way, right? He talks about working you multiple times. This is part of it, right? You can work before, right? You can work in the same time. You can work after, right? Does not matter, does not affect the kata. You just do the work and you whoop them, right? So this, this idea, especially the second Jujidome is critical. Uh, to Kyoho's fighting method, um, which if you've been practicing uh, Tachi Seho, you'll understand, right? This idea that the low beats the high, right? Becomes even more important when you're using two swords. While we can certainly fight with both swords high. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Inevitably, we swing down. And your swords get heavy, right? They get heavy, they get hard to use. Especially if you're fighting more than just the 60 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever your, your school does for kumitachi, for, for sparring, right? they can get tiring, right? If you can imagine being on campaign, be like, well, we've been sieging this castle for six hours and my shoulders are falling off. Time to tie off my swords on. Right, just tie those swords on. It'll, that's a great idea. Flippity floppity, razory stoppity. Just scratch my butt. Being able to fight in this low position, 
lets you use your body weight and really make use of your swords when they're feeling heavy. Um, in one of the later katas, he'll talk specifically about the method of using a heavy sword, and it is exactly that, right? It is exactly this crossbody kiryage. Um, it's really pretty useful. So, concepts. What are the concepts in this kata? Sorry, wrong school. <laughs> the concepts are pretty simple. Follow his attack, right? His attack is coming. I know, I hit that bone. It was just dunk. That was a great sound. Uh, swords are dangerous, boys and girls. Even me, it would. Um, following behind their attack makes it hard for them to defend. It makes it extra hard if they can't move their freaking sword to get to you. Right? Press them. Force them to move into weird positions. Right? Let them know that life is dangerous out here in the dark with all the scary people. Right? La 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 la. Right? And remember, you have two swords. Always try and, um, maybe not in the beginning. First couple of months you do these katas, shut up and just do them, right? But then, you know, start to cogitate a little bit, think about them a little bit, start to look at what else you could do, right? Not big and elaborate, not, well, I could do 14 ninja steps over here. I mean, right? Oh, 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 oh. What's close? What, what, is, what is close to him, right? What can I hit him with that he can't easily respond to? What can I do that keeps me safe? In these positions, right? Think about it. Give some, uh, give some mind. So I think what we'll do next is look at some applications with uh, other tools. Let's look at some application with Fukuroshinai. It should be clear from this video up to this point that I like being beaten on. That too. <laughs> that uh, the two sword work is fairly simple, right? So when you're feeling spirited <laughs> and you're just like, I'm gonna get you. Ooh, I'm dead. <laughs> right? Don't try and save me. Swing your sword. That's all part of my plan. I see that. It was very good deceptive timing. I gotta pay more attention to you than the camera. <laughs> <laughs> It should be simple. It should be easy to understand that you have control, right? That it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be rough for you, right? You can come in and really just bully the other person if that's your intent. Thanking me now. Well, it is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, John. I know. Happy Valentine's Day, Eddie. No, no indeed. Right? Uh, so, easy. It's easy. Easy. He tries to go for the hand, go for the wrist, go for the things that are far away. Don't matter. Right? Stretch before you. So right. You can take him. It's not hard. Very, very easy. If you did your foundation work, if you did your Tachi Seho, if you built up the body knowledge, right? Indeed. <laughs> Okay, it should be clear that uh, 
open-handed work and unarmed work is going to proceed in the same fashion. It's not. Right? It's a hand high. Right? Oh, oh, oh. Right? <laughs> Whereas, in the Tachi Seho, they're introducing ideas. Sasen has an idea. Ukanagashi has an idea. Haso has an idea. Amashuchi has an idea. With the Nito Seho, we're just fighting. Right? <laughs> we're just fighting. There's nothing. We're, we're, we use those ideas, right? Can you count the ideas that we use in this? Good and, uh, Right? What are the beginning kata that we use here? Right? What's this? <gasps> Mojiri. Gamai. Right? We've pinned. He retreats. Oh. Ukanagashi. Right? You see how the kata come together. Right? Haisen, Uchidome. Right? Oh, it's like Haritsuke, but on the opposite side. All of the kata, they are your ABCs. This is your spoken word, right? Does it make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, you probably just need to practice more. If it does, you probably just need to practice more. So, uh, obviously, uh, you should be able to extrapolate the Jute work from here too. Um, simple, 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 simple. So easy. I think that is probably enough. Yeah, yeah, don't forget to stretch. Protect your elbows, right? Protect those elbows. And your hips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train. <laughs>